All right. Good morning, guys. Good morning, guys. It is Wednesday night for us. Thursday morning for you guys. Is it fish awake? Fish are asleep. Oh. I don't want to turn their light on. They've had a rough day. Because they've been swimming all day. Must be tiring. Yeah. So uh, we just had Bible study, guys. We're in the book of Judges. And um, we're we're kind of transitioning our Wednesday. Well, we've been for months. Um, we added worship to it months ago. Man, actually, has it been a year already, maybe? Since we added worship to the Bible study, Wednesday Bible study? Yeah, just about. And, um, but we're just kind of basically making it a full-blown service, except I'm not preaching. It's a Bible study, and there's a reason why. And I explained, but in summary, to some people, there's some people that at our church that work on Sundays. Yeah. So Wednesday is their time for fellowship, their time to hear a word, their time to worship. You know, and um, we have a few people say, man, I work, I work Sundays. That's why you don't see me on Sunday, but I, this is my church. Mm -hmm. So this is their main service is Wednesday, you know. And so that's why we're going to, you know, obviously we have worship. Uh, we do the announcements. We... Um, uh, give an announcement for the, the offering, for the tithing, for um, missions. I mean, everything except I'm not preaching. Yeah, and the um, only difference that we do have is we have youth on Wednesdays. Yes. And we are eventually, guys, you know, once we are able to get, like, you know, more a little bit more staff, we are going to be implementing, of course, our ushers, and, mm -hmm. and then we are implementing child care um, and our... I, I can't call it Sunday school, but, you know, mm -hmm. Wednesday school. <laughs> so we are eventually going to implement some teachers um, for, for Wednesday as well, yeah. which would be awesome, guys, because I think, you know, the more that our children can, can get to learn about the Lord, man, that'll be awesome, yeah. you know. But, um, but it takes teachers, guys. It takes, you know, um, it takes for us to have the you know, the, the willing hearts to want to be able to, yeah. to help, to be able to put all this together. Um, it's, you know, it takes a village, you know, and it takes, you know, the willing hearts. Mm -hmm. We never want to obligate anybody to do it, but it always takes, you know, just people who are willing to do it. Yeah, we have had a Bible study since day one of House of Rest. So it's yeah. been almost 12 years for Wednesday, but I can see it progressing and I'm okay with that because ultimately... The Lord is going to lead what he wants, mm -hmm. you know, and when I have enough people saying, hey, this is the only day I can come. This is the only day I can come. And and they want to worship, too. They want to have that moment. You know what I mean? And um, so, I, yeah, I, I think it's important, you know, at the end, as far as the end, I mean, for me, a service is an altar call. And, you know, the thing is now we're doing these prayers. So I, I'm still like, OK, Lord, do I keep it at prayers or do we bring you know, worship back for a proper altar call. So these are things that you're going to see transition, guys, and it's important. Like right now, I don't know if you guys know, those of you that aren't in Modesto, but like we lock the front door because we don't have greeters. We don't have ushers and we can't leave that front lobby open. And then, you know, it's nighttime. We are in downtown Modesto. So we kind of, people have to come in through the back, you know, and whatnot. But once it it gets to a point where we have greeters and ushers, we might just go full blown with the front door. I don't know. Only only the Lord knows what yeah. He wants to do. Yeah, in time. Yeah. yeah. But we are. Um, I I do feel that God is 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 doing something on those on Wednesday nights. Yeah. 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 He's you know, I think He's leading us in in that direction yeah. for sure. But what I do like, guys, is that I never want to take away the Bible study aspect of it. That I do know for sure, uh, because Bible study is the meat. Sunday service is a celebration, you know, and um, and I want to keep it like that because I think that's important because uh, it's Wednesday where you're really going to get a lot of the richness of, of, of the Word. Amen. You know? I agree. So, uh, all right. Um, we wanted to talk about this interesting passage 
right here in the Gospel of John, something Jesus said. Yeah, I do want to send our, our love and condolences to um, our, our sister Lisa and her family, you know, who um, I know that they, her, her sister and her mom were in a, in a car accident. And um, so I want you guys to please uh, continue to pray for her family. I know that, you know, she's been taking care of her mother for so long. And um, I know that they were in a car accident, uh, I'm going to say, two days ago. And um, her mother, her mother did pass. And um, guys, continue to pray for the rest of her family. I know that uh, her sister had been in ICU. And um, just continue to please pray for the family. Uh, that the Lord continue to bring them comfort and peace during these these times and uh, the entire family guys you know continue to pray for all of them lisa's a very very dear uh family to to us she has been with house arrest for years and um i just pray that you know that the lord give her the strength and and lisa i know you're watching this because you watch everything um but know that we love you so much and that we're here for you sister and uh and just know that we are praying for you and your entire family. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Um, in the Gospel of John, chapter 12, starting at verse 22, um, I just want to read a little passage of something that Jesus said. And then I want to talk about the context of that. And obviously, like we do, like the name of this is called Relevant Bible Talk is is how do we make this relevant to our lives today? You know, but I'm going to read 22 all the way to 26. Okay. And David reads out of the New King James, guys, and I'll be reading out of the out of the message. Yeah. The Message Bible, guys, is a supplemental Bible. It makes things a lot simpler. Don't ever use the message to study on. I use it as a supplement. You know, if you want to study you're going to get a New King James or an Amplified or an ESV, something like that. Um, even a King James Bible, if you like that old school flavor, you know. But Amplified, I, I do like it because it's, it's a good supplementary, you know. So anyways, um, 22, it says, Philip came and told Andrew. Chapter 12, verse 22. Philip came and told Andrew, and in turn, Andrew and Philip told Jesus. So Philip and Andrew told Jesus this. But Jesus answered them, saying, The hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. He who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. If anyone serves me, let him follow me. And where I am, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my father will honor. Amen. It says, uh, Philip went and told Andrew. Andrew and Philip together told Jesus. Jesus answered, time's up. The time has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Listen carefully. Unless a grain of wheat is buried in the ground, dead to the world it is never any more than a grain of wheat but if it is buried it sprouts and reproduces itself in many times over in the same way anyone who holds on to life just as it is destroys that life but if you let it go reckless in your love you'll have it forever real and eternal if any one of you wants to serve me, then follow me. Then you'll be where I am, ready to serve at a moment's notice. The Father will honor and reward anyone who serves me. Amen. You know, at first glance, it might seem self-explanatory, but there's so much deeper things that the, that the Lord is talking about. And I want to talk about the very beginning. Why does he say the hour has come that the Son of Man should be glorified? This is because this is he's approaching his end. Because for him to be glorified, he has to die in order to resurrect. Yeah. So he's basically letting him know, hey, the time is coming. Yeah. The time is coming for me to die. 
you know, and that's why he he makes his example about a, a, a grain of wheat. Because it says, most assuredly, I say to you, unless a grain falls in the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. That one grain out of the stock, a grain unto itself will never be anything. Like, you know, he could put that grain on the table and it'll just stay there for years. It produces nothing. But when you bury it in this world, it's going to produce more grain. So basically, Jesus is saying, I'm that grain. The time is coming for me to die. I am that grain. And out of me, when I am buried, will produce more. Yeah. Because we couldn't exist as believers yeah. unless he was buried first. And by his burial, then that grain is able to germinate and create more grain, right? So he's using his own life as an example, his own death, I mean. And, and so right here, then it says... So I, I like how real quick he, he compares that and then he throws us in the mix or whoever's reading it. Yeah, because if we're supposed to be Christ-like and exemplify yeah. Christ. Yeah, because yeah. then he says, he who loves his life will lose it. He who loves his life will lose it. You know, and you think like, okay, I love my life, so I'm going to... Here's the thing, none of us can... We don't sustain life, only God does. Mm -hmm. And honestly... If if all we care about is our life now, that's temporary. That's temporary. That means nothing, right? I actually like the way it says it in there. Uh, where's it at? Um, in the same way, if anyone holds on to life, just wait, sorry. in the same way, anyone who holds on to life, just as it is just as it is, destroys that life. But if you let it go, reckless in your love, you'll have it. You know, so Jesus says here, he who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternal life. You know, so I love the fact that Jesus is saying, listen, if you're going to follow me, then understand where I'm going, because I'm, I'm on my way to my death. And unless I die, more grain cannot be produced. So in the same way, he's telling us, if you don't die to yourself, then you produce nothing. You know, and and you know what it reminds me of? The, the, um, the story Jesus says about the man, with, he gives talents. Yeah. Right, And he tells one, he gives one X amount of talents, the other one X amount of talents, the third one X amount of talents. This one, he doubles it. This one, you know, he multiplies it. And the other one is so scared, so he buries it and doesn't produce nothing. And, and the master comes and is angry with him because he did nothing with his talent. Think about it. Don't people say that life is a gift? Yeah. So... It's like it's a gift that God gives you, but what did you do in this life? What did you do with your life? Yeah. Did you produce something or did you just live your life and waste it? Yeah, and do yeah, and do nothing with it. It's, it's it's crazy, right? Because it's like in the end, God's like, What did you do with the life I gave you? I gave you life. What did you do? Did you destroy? Did you build? What did you do? You know? And um like I was telling you, what I found real interesting, and, and I was I was using because we have this tree. You guys know if you've been with us for a while. What are, what are the nectarines? No, tangerines. Tangerines, and um, like those little orange cuties, right? Whatever they're mm -hmm. called. Yeah. And they're they're turning orange, you know. But I was I was sharing with her. I'm like, if I go and yank one off right now, I have just stopped its life. It, it, its life is is in the stem because it's getting nutrients from the tree. But the moment I pull it off, I, I basically kill it. Now, that fruit now, yes, it's been dead to itself, but unless I bury it, it won't be nothing. Like, what happens if I put it on, on the counter? What will happen to that? Nothing, but you know what's amazing though, 
is that even though it's still sitting in that, it's going to sit in that counter, it still holds life in it, though. For a little bit. Yeah, for a little bit. It still has the potential. Mm -hmm. It still has the potential to give life. You know what's weird is that <laughs> it's held on by a stem. When we're born, we're held on by an umbilical cord. Yeah. But the moment that umbilical, umbilical cord is cut, in reality, we say a baby is born, but in reality, we have started to die. Yeah. Death has begun at that moment. Yeah, so for some of us, it takes 20, 30, 40, 50, 80, 90 years for some of us. But nevertheless... When that umbilical cord was cut, it began your ascension of your death. So just like the fruit that lays on that counter, like you said, I like what you said, it has the potential of life mm -hmm. because it holds seed in it. Yeah, it's a seed. But what happens if nothing is done with that fruit? What happens after a few weeks? Yeah, it dies. It actually rots. Yeah, it rots. It rots and it dies. And produces nothing. So it's like, it's almost like the dash. You know how they say about mm -hmm. that dash? It's like, what do you do with that little bit of time? She's talking about a tombstone. Yeah, a tombstone. Like the dash, you know, when the little bit of life that you have with that dash, what do you do with that time mm -hmm. that you're sitting on that counter? What did you do with your dash? What did you do with your dash? You know? Yeah. So... Yeah, some fruit, it'll rot in two weeks. Yeah. Um, and for us, it takes a lifetime. But it's the same thing. It we, is. We it's are... like we're, we're sitting on that. We're sitting on that. Um, <laughs> we're sitting on that shelf, you know? Yeah. And, and, and just like all of us, you know what I mean? At, at one point, that fruit, even though it's been plucked, it looks nice. It looks fresh. It looks, it looks young. At one time, we were all young. At one time, we were full of energy. Well, you couldn't even tell we were dead. You know, you can't tell when you when you go into a grocery store. Do you realize when you go to the fruit and vegetable, you're looking at nothing but dead fruit and dead vegetables. But they have a certain life. What are you going to do with that life, guys? So anyways, my point is this. Is that unless the seeds of that, what are these? Ten, what did you say they were? Tangerines. Yeah, I keep wanting to say nectarine. What's a nectarine? Maybe like a peach without, oh, without okay. the fuzz. Oh, okay. Sorry. I just eat them, guys. I don't know the names of them. Um, but if I take that and get the seeds and bury it, I'll get a whole other tree. Yeah. That one seed, it's weird how, how in one seed, the very, the very fabric of an entire tree is in it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I remember that my son, I remember one time I was in the car with Matthew one time. And he says, hey, mom. I said, what's up? And he says, do you know most, uh, most people die at 27? And I'm like, what? He's all, yeah. He's all, most people die young. And I didn't get it. He's all... Yeah, I just wanted to tell you that. And it took me a moment to ponder it. And um, and then he, he finally, he, he said, you know, it's because they, they stop living, mm -hmm. you know? It's almost like if they stop living life, they give up on life so quickly. Yeah. You know? And I never really, I never really thought of it that way. He says, it's just that this world, you know, has like the people of the generation or the youth of today have given up so easily, you know, and he says they just give up so quickly that, that they just don't value life the same anymore. And they've given up on life so quickly that they, they're getting younger and younger and giving up on life. And yeah. it's almost like they're living a lifeless life. 
and and that was a really really heavy statement yeah it really really was and i just you know and and that's always stayed with me because it's true we're living in a world now where that tangerine to the shelf the in between is becoming so much very smaller short. so much smaller and so much shorter and it's sad to see the life the life the value of life is becoming that dash is becoming so much so much shorter and it's always made me ponder and make me think like you know it's life is there's no more value that it, life is just not valued the same anymore yeah you know you know i i thought of something else i don't know how it compares or whatever but i, I want to say before i forget it um when I was locked up, okay, a lot of guys, um, they make their time easier and they'll say, forget your wife, forget your kids, forget your family. Just you're here. This is the reality. So live this reality because worrying about what's out there, you only lose your mind. So there's a lot of guys that they, they kind of mentally check out from their loved ones. And it's messed up because a lot of I know a lot of people that have loved ones in prison, they're like, man, they don't even call anymore. They don't even visit. It's because, guys, life is easier when they forget you out here because it just makes it easier for them. Unfortunately, it hurts those that are out here. Yeah. You know? Um, so here's the thing, though. Unless you're a lifer, which where I was, it wasn't a lot of lifers. I wasn't in a, in a high level four or nothing. So most people had outdates. So, but they would they would try to build a life within that ecosystem of prison. They would build on their reputation. They would build on everything was involved with that. And they didn't give the outside world any mind. And, and they would see me, I would write my kids every day, every day, guys, a day didn't pass. You know, I'm not saying that I would write all five, but I was writing a kid every day, every day. I mean, like stamps were like gold to me. And, and people would tell me, man, you're dwelling too much on your people out there. You're going to make your time harder. But I saw it backwards. I'm like, why are you so worried on building your life here? This is temporary. I'm trying to build something out there. Yeah. I'm trying to lay seed out there. I'm trying to worry about what's... I don't care about my reputation in prison. I don't care about how good I'm a domino player in prison. I don't care about the sports here. I don't care about nothing here. This is the place that I sleep and I eat, but my heart and my mind are out there. So all, all of my investment was out, you know? And I think in the same way, people live in this world. And you're failing to see that this is short term because all of us have an outdate. Yeah. And we worry about our reputation in this world. We worry about the things of this world. We worry. And the whole time I'm like, what are you doing? Jesus himself says, lay up your treasures in heaven. Why are you wasting your time with this stuff? That's why he's saying, um, it made me think of this because he says, he who loves his life will lose it. Yeah. You're trying to build a life here. And for what? You ain't you know? taking it with you. Yeah. It, it's a, he who hates his life in this world. Will keep it for eternal life. Yeah. You know, and, and here's the thing, right? Here's the reward. Is on my release date, my kids are outside in that parking lot. And they I was gone for six years. My daughter was one when I went away. When I got out, she was seven, but she knew exactly who daddy was. And she ran right into my arms. And to this day, matter of fact, she's coming tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I was, you know, so all of my investment, all of my investment was on, on those kids, on, on my family, you know, my mom, my dad, my, my, my brothers, you know, all of my investment to where a lot of these guys, yeah, you build your little cool life here and yeah, you're a big shot here in prison and yeah, you got, but once you got out, nobody knows you anymore. Yeah. Nobody cares anymore, you know? So guys, are you going to invest in a temporary life or are you going to bury your life so much fruit can be produced? Yeah. What's it going to be? Yeah. 
Absolutely. What 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 what's what's it going to be, guys? Because we all got a release date from this world, all of us. And 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 what's going to happen? Are you are you investing that seed in in your family, in your children, in your church, in your community, in yourself? Or are you just a fruit on the shelf waiting to rot? That's what I wanted to say. Mm-hmm. It's a nice hat you got there, lady. Thank you. Representing that cross, huh? That's right. I've had it for a long time, this hat, for like 15 years. Really? Yeah. Why'd you change your accent right now? I don't know. Oh. Had it for a long, long time. Yeah. So, guys, I know uh, it's been a while since you've seen both of us here at the cross wall. I know, huh? And those that are new, if you go back, like the first two years, it was always here at the cross wall. This what do you is mean first two years. First, oh yeah, it has been. Yeah. So um, this is not props. This is not a studio. This is our living this room. Is our wall. Sharon. Uh, collect i don't know when way before i knew her collected crosses and then people started gifting them to her so then when you moved up here you now bought them. officially it has been maybe now officially it's been 20 years that you started a wall it collect, was, a cross collection when i met you it had already been about 12 years mm -hmm. so now with you uh eight years more so 20 years guys 20 whole years maybe since I've had those. Uh, well, now there's some that have been gifted to both of us. That's uh, been quite some time, I remember guys. that red one. That's the one uh, Derek gave us. Yeah, when I Mexico. started collecting my... some, I'm starting to see some cricket now, though. I almost hit you on the face. But, yeah, I got to move some around. Is that the one Louie made. That blue the one. big one. That blue one. Wait. This one? Yeah, it's cricket. I guess you can see uh -huh. it, huh? Yeah, that one's a custom man. You should see it. it. Looks like a lowrider. It's all custom paint job. It's it's really cool. I haven't been able to see it on camera, so I'm kind of seeing them a little. I gotta kind of move them. Yeah. yeah, I told him to put that. I told him to put his aquarium there because I thought it would look nice because it's supposed to be lit up. But I'm kind of not liking the aquarium there anymore. It ain't going anywhere. But it ain't going anywhere, guys, because it looks small on here, but it's actually not small. It's a big aquarium. It's just a 75-gallon tank. It's huge, guys. But I don't my, know. I don't know why it looks small on camera, because though. Because we're closer. It makes my head looks bigger than a 75-gallon aquarium. Oh, yeah, it looks our heads. Because I'm big. I'm far from it. Look, two of my heads make there's no way my head is as big as a 75-gallon tank. Yeah, it's I hope not. Yeah, we're kind of far away from it, so but yeah, guys, that's that's what's weird. If when I turn back, it doesn't look, look how huge that looks. Turn around, you can't, huh? No, turn your body like seriously. Look how big that aquarium looks. I know, it's right? Huge. Yeah, so I don't know, man. It's kind of weird why it doesn't look like that. Something's fishy around fishy aquarium. Ha ha ha, so funny. Wow. Yeah. My friend wants to sell this one for the church. Hmm? My friend from uh, Reno. Oh, she still hasn't sold it? Yeah. She says she wants to sell this one for the church. A nice one. Mm -hmm. Nobody's there to feed them. Are you going to go feed them? If you go feed them, we'll get it. It's smaller than this one, though. It's a 65. Yeah, but it's nice. Mm. Yeah. If you guys go feed it, then we'll get it. If you guys will go feed it, okay? At the church. If somebody says they'll feed the fish every day, we'll get a little yeah, aquarium. It's easy to say that. It's different to do. True. But Anyways, guys, guys. I think it's time for bed. I have a doctor appointment tomorrow. So. I got um, a bike ride to do tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. I'm really happy to be on here, guys. It was really nice to be able to sit down. It wasn't super duper late. I think it was around 10 o'clock. So, what do you mean it's 10 o'clock? What time is it? It's past midnight before we even started. No way. 10 o'clock. 
What the heck? What world do you live in? Oh my God! No way, guys. Look, Ten o'clock. It's this... one o'clock in the morning. Are you serious? Yes. You didn't know that? No. I don't feel like it was. Yeah. Well. Oh my God. Guess who? Is that, that why my eyes feel like they hurt? Like my eyes are hurting. I hope somebody screenshots that and sends that to you right there. What? Well, you just did. I look crazy. <laughs> Guys, screenshot that and put it no, on her Facebook. You better not. And tag her. Why would you tell them to do that? Because they're gonna do it anyways. You guys better not. I'm not kidding. My eyes feel like do I it have. Do again? No, stop it. Wow. <laughs> I'm so serious. My eyes hurt. Like they're burning. Like they hurt. I've actually been going to sleep earlier, guys, than usual, which is actually pretty nice. But he stays up. But I've been going to sleep. Maybe I stay up because I've got to render. I've been kind of going to sleep maybe around between 11 and midnight, which is pretty good. So I'm doing better, guys. So I still got to render this video and upload it to YouTube and make a little thumbnail. Oh, I'm exhausted thinking about it. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Man. But I miss you guys. It was really, really nice. Lord, why couldn't you just make me a plumber? <laughs> What? You really wanted to be plunging toilets? Not I can't really, see you but, doing that. But I bet they get sleep at night. <laughs> no, because they're on call. I wouldn't be on call. That's I'm what they do. Nine to five plumber. That's it. The Lord gives you the desires of your heart. I didn't say desire it. You better watch what you ask for. He's going to make him a plumber. And then he's going to be having plumber butt. <laughs> that don't even make no sense. You know when they're down under looking and oh. then they, <laughs> they show their crack. <laughs> uh -huh. Sometimes I feel like a spiritual plumber going oh, un God. going unclogging people's spiritual pipes. <laughs> <laughs> what are spiritual pipes? I don't know. Just the gunk people, man. <laughs> people get too much supposed to be in the word and and you go to the world and get your spiritual pipes clogged up <laughs> then you got to call your pastor to come unclog it cast them things out of you oh my god. what oh my gosh he did make me a plumber oh my god are you serious wow oh my god you guys gotta pray for him all right, guys. See you later. He's Plumber Rocha. Have a good day. God we bless love you. you. Guys. Uh, add some cinnamon in your in your coffee <laughs> if you haven't done that. Um, I gave Abraham. Um, supposedly, I made him a coffee drinker, but um, I a, did. I miss him, guys. The other day, he. Uh, I said, "Throw some cinnamon," and he was, "Why is that good?" I said, "Try it," and he was like, "And then once he tried it, he's like, man, that's really good. That's old school style." I miss him guys. He's been he's in he's in Tahoe. He's over there working. He's over there working from till Friday and then he'll drive back and then he'll be with us until Sunday and then he'll leave with us again when we go back on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And then he's going to stay over there again for another week to work. And then he'll be back again on Friday the following week mm -hmm. and then he'll come back over the weekend. Mm -hmm. You know? You know who wants to go with this? I don't know if we have room, though. But, um, guys, you know, that's what he's doing because he's looking for work, you know? And this young man, you know, he's a good worker. But it's hard for him to look for work out here. He really wants to get his contractor's license, which I'm really proud of him because he's been learning a lot of new stuff. So I'm encouraging him to get his contractor's license. And um, he's been learning a lot of trades from mm -hmm. Tomas, from yeah. from Alex, and hopefully when he comes back, he can, you know, work with, you know. Um, Rigo. Or, yeah, and just different people, but Abraham's a little worker, so, yeah. Who wants to go? Gabriel. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Because he stopped that job. Nice. Yeah. That's awesome. But Amen. Hopefully, I don't know, figure it, we'll figure out a way. Yeah. Yeah. So anyways, awesome. guys.
God bless you guys. Right. Thank you so much. Every minute we talk more, the more longer I got to render. So see you later. Well, that's what a plumber does. Works, huh? Bye. All right, bye, guys.